What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year medical student and also a biomedical science graduate studying at King's College London. And guys, in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all of the big mistakes that I made when studying in medical school and university as well. So hopefully saving you guys time so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first very big mistake that I made in my last degree especially is not studying in groups. Now, I'm not entirely sure why I didn't really study in groups before and why I didn't like it but I imagine one of the reasons is just the fear of competition so I felt like back in my last degree that if I work in groups you know I'm helping my competition and that is just a silly silly way to think the second reason also is just I don't know just kind of preferring to be at my table by myself and also alone in my own mind and also working at my own pace and while these are some valid reasons I definitely should have been more open to working in groups right now during medical school I often spend a lot of time working with Nasser and Georgina as well we often uh, work online together or actually also in person and also just colleagues that I have around with me. This was particularly helpful when we had our practical OSCEs exams very, very recently. Being able to work in a group made learning and practicing my examination skills so, so key. So there's a few reasons as to why I highly recommend you guys work in groups. The first one is that it's honestly just more fun. You know, sitting at your desk all day by yourself is super boring, let's be honest. But if you're online with your friends working together, then it's a lot more fun. You you can revise for 25 minutes, half an hour, maybe even an hour long, and then actually take a break together, have a quick chat about what you're doing and just life in general, and it makes working so much more fun and easier. The second reason I highly recommend you guys work in groups is that three or four brains is much better than one. So especially in medical school when we had our OSCE practical exams and also just our written exams in general, working in groups meant that if there was a difficult problem that we didn't understand, we were actually able to put this question to all of us and would all be able to work out the answer and share the answer together. Also, importantly, sharing resources. So if I found an online book that I thought was really, really good and explained a key concept together, then I would actually share it with all of my friends. And rather than just me learning, we all actually managed to learn. So it's really important to try and get your mindset out of this competition that, you know, your friends, your colleagues are competing against you because in reality, they're really not. It's actually much better that all of your best friends, you know, if you just pick a couple, you know, two or three people, it's much better if you all graduate and get first classes and do really really well in school because my last degree the fact that all my friends did well also meant that we all went off to university again to do medicine uh, together so the fact that you can actually help each other means that you're all able to go up rather than just you by yourself so the first tip i have for you guys is to find a good number of people that you can honestly trust who work just as hard as you and hopefully that will enhance your ability to study that's number two let's go move on to number three no number two the second huge mistake that i made uh, in university when studying and probably my biggest mistake of all time is just sitting down writing notes and highlighting and expecting that to be enough to actually stick in my memory rather than testing myself. Now I've spoken about this a number of times on my channel and the main point is that we don't learn through reading and highlighting we learn through testing ourselves and even if you might like to highlight stuff you might like to write notes that's completely fine but make sure that when you're actually revising for your exams you're testing your knowledge. So one way that I actually test my own knowledge is that right Right now, in the last couple of years, I don't make notes anymore. I actually just make flashcards on my computer using a app called Anki. Now Anki is really amazing. It's an online software that allows you to basically create loads of flashcards so that you're testing yourself every single day. And it's by applying space repetition and also active recall. These two kind of strategies and methods of learning is what really allows you to remember things in the long term, not highlighting and not writing notes. If you guys want an in-depth tutorial about how I actually uh, create these flashcards and also why I just stopped taking notes in university. I'll leave uh, those videos linked up above. Now, the third big mistake that I made kind of links off of the last point, which is that I spend so much time writing notes. Now, I'll be the first person to put my hands up and say that I was extremely guilty of this in university. I'm not entirely sure why, but when we go to university and also in school as well, we all have this kind of notion and this idea that in order to learn, you have to write a number of notes. You have to have a thick piece of, you know, paper, exercise book filled with notes. And that just doesn't make sense. I used to spend hundreds of hours writing notes about all of my lectures in a nice beautiful format and what I realized coming towards the end of medical school is that anything that you want to learn especially in medicine is pretty much already out there on the internet in a very concise format. If I wanted to learn a concept rather than actually write the notes all I had to do was go online and get someone else's notes or maybe also just read a textbook that is very very concise and by the way if you guys want to check out all of the notes that I wrote myself for medical school I'll leave a link 
link down below as well. But pretty much instead of wasting my time writing my own notes, I should just skip that process entirely, got someone else's notes or just read it online or read a concise textbook and that would have saved me a lot of time. In university, particularly in medical school, we had over 200 lectures every single year. So keeping up with 200 lectures, writing notes on all of them and also being able to come back and review my notes just didn't make sense. I wasn't able to keep up with it and it definitely wasted a lot of time. And as well as that, as I mentioned in the last point, I realized that writing notes does not help me learn stuff. What I learned is that I can actually just skip this kind of middle ground step and just skip towards the end. So now when I have my lectures, rather than writing notes and then converting the notes to actual Anki flashcards, all I do is remove the middle step of writing notes and I make flashcards immediately. Now flashcards are great because not only does it allow you to test your memory at a later date, but also it's also kind of a form of note taking in itself because you still have um, a place where you have all of the information readily available to you. And even on the software that I use on my laptop, Anki, in Anki I can just search up whatever topic I want and straight away I'll have all of my flashcards right in front of me and that sort of is a way of note taking, but immediately converting it to flashcards will save you time because it allow you to also test your memory in the future. But again, go check out those videos for more information on that. And again, one of the key things that I learned, probably a little bit too late, is to work smart rather than to work hard. During my early years of university, I would spend so much time working hard and not really working in a smart way. What I thought is that if I spent a number of hours working hard, if I worked for like 12 hours a day, then I automatically would get a good grade. Now, of course, there is a correlation between working hard and spending a good number of hours on working, but that's not entirely true. You can, for example, be in the library for eight hours and spend four of those hours not concentrating, maybe chatting to your friends, maybe going for a walk, and those hours would be hard, but not necessarily smart. So what I do right now is I'm incredibly efficient with my time. If I'm sitting down at my desk to work, I'm making sure that my phone is away from me and that every single hour I spent on my desk is extremely efficient. So instead of sitting down for eight hours and being distracted for half of those hours, I literally normally just spend a couple of hours a day sat on my desk, but making sure that every single minute, every single hour is spent being very efficient so that I'm working smart and not hard. And that also ties in with the last points that I made. Rather than actually working hard every single day, sitting down, writing all of my notes after my lectures, instead of actually doing that, now I just sit down on my desk, spend a small amount of time converting the lectures and converting the content that I want to learn into flashcards. And rather than, you know, spending eight hours in the library, I might only spend three hours going through my flashcards and using that efficient way of learning means that I saved myself a huge amount of time in the last few years of medical school. So when you're sitting down to work, number one, make sure that you're actually working and not spending time elsewhere. And number two, make sure you're working in an efficient way that works for you so that you're not wasting your time learning things in the incorrect way. Now let's move on to the final point. The final mistake that I made in medical school and have definitely stopped and put my foot down is that I would often work really, really hard and not take breaks and also importantly, not reward myself when it's necessary. Now, especially in my last degree during biomedical science, I would often spend, you know, six, seven days a week, sat down on my desk and not taking any breaks. You know, I would work from 10 a.m., let's say to 9 p.m. And then at 9 p.m., I will, you know, have a shower and plan my, my day out for the next day. And I'll get in bed and I'll wake up and do it all over again. And that is what led me to be very burnt out. It also made me just be very, you know, not happy with my mental health. Now things are very, very different. Of course, I might still work from 10 a.m. till, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the evening. But during that day, I will definitely take, you know, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour for lunch. I might play Xbox during that hour. Maybe at 4 p.m. I might take a quick break to go and have a gym session, maybe go for a bit of a jog. And then importantly, if my friend calls me up at 8.30 p.m. or 8 p.m. and is like, Kenji, I haven't seen you for a while. Should we go to Nando's for dinner? Should we go for a gym session together? I will straight away say, you know what? I've spent the last couple of hours sat at my desk working, I deserve to take a break. You know, there's no point going to bed at 9 p.m. and sleeping and waking up and doing it all over again. That is just so unsustainable. What I do now is very, very different. And it's a very good balance between working hard and making sure that I'm doing what I need to do, but also not being too hard on myself, making sure I am taking breaks to keep healthy and also rewarding myself when I've had a really good work session during the day. That actually sounds counterintuitive. It may sound like it's kind of going against your work, but I promise you, 
you, it's not. If you reward yourself and take good breaks, you will actually be able to work a lot longer. Revising and studying is not a sprint, it's definitely a marathon. So make sure you don't make the same mistake that I did. And also another point is that when I actually used to go hang out with my friends during that little break, it wouldn't even be a break because I'd be sat at Nando's worrying and feeling guilty about the fact that I'm taking time out to spend time with my friends, even though I've earned the break, even though I deserve a break and I've worked extremely really hard. That makes no sense. Don't feel guilty. If you've worked hard, do not feel guilty. Go to the gym and have a good gym session. Go hang out with your friends and have a good time with them. Never feel guilty for the things that you deserve, especially when you worked really hard in life. Now, those are the five tips I hope will help you guys when actually studying. Please leave a like and a comment down below if it's actually provided any value to you. All the likes and comments really helps me out. It really helps the YouTube algorithm as well. Also, make sure you're subscribed and notifications turned on so you never miss another upload. And before you leave, here are a bunch of videos on my channel that hopefully will help you when studying and preparing for your exams. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.